behalf of the entire board of directors, I'd like to welcome everyone to the 2024 annual meeting in Nashville. I hope everybody made good decisions last night. Um, I know probably some people did, I saw some people this morning. Um, but welcome again. Um, this is the first time since 1999 that we've been somewhere other than Florida for our annual meeting. I think it's been well received and we'll certainly be looking for feedback in the future. Um, but let's go ahead and call this meeting to order. So as, as we've done in the past, and it's going to take a little bit longer than usual, but we'll begin with our traditional road call. So please stand up and tell us your name and where you're from and use your, your big person voice so everybody can hear you. So welcome everyone. Um, I'd like to welcome a few special guests from USA Hockey. They, they just introduced themselves. Kevin Rombach, Bob Mancini, Heather Mannix, and Scott Pollock. From the Polish University Hockey Association, Pavel Dworczak, welcome. Uh, Pavel is going to run the 2025 World Cup of University Hockey in Oshrans in Poland. So welcome, uh, Pavel. Uh, past President and Hall of Famer, Al Murdoch, always in attendance, thanks for coming. So at this time, I would like to just take a few minutes to recognize our Divisional Players of the Year and Coaches of the Year and our national champions in each division, as well as our Don Spencer Award winner and our Community Service Award winners and our overall Community Service winner. So I'll, I'll announce my division. I'll try to get through this uh, as quickly as you can, but I do think it's important to recognize them for their accomplishments. Uh, so I'll start with Men's Division 3. If we can hold the applause after each division, that certainly would go quicker. So Men's Division 3, our national champion, Lawrence Tech University. Our Coach of the Year from Grand Valley State University is Dylan Knox. Our Player of the Year from University of Missouri is Nick Spolick, and our Community Service Award went to Colorado Mason University. So congratulations to the Division Three winners. <laughs> our Women's Division Two, Sioux College, was the national champions. Our Coach of the Year, Maddie Maloney from Adrian College. Our Player of the Year, Caitlin Coaster from Niagara University, and our Community Service Award went to Sioux College. Uh, and that's the Women's Division Two. Congratulations. <laughs> you trying to keep up with me? <laughs> Men's Division Two National Champions, Indiana University. Our Coach of the Year, David Weaver, for the second year in a row. You'll hear from him in just a minute. Uh, our Player of the Year from Concordia University of Wisconsin, Chris Hemming. And our Community Service Award went to Boise State University. Congratulations. Women's Division I National Champions, Adrian College. Coach of the Year, Jason White for the second year in a row, Midland University. Our Player of the Year, Kayla Flanagan for Midland University. And a Community Service Award went to Indiana Tech University. Congratulations to those. <laughs> Our Men's Division I National Champions, Adrian College. They doubled up, congratulations Adrian College. Coach of the Year, Wyatt Wazalencha, Minot University. Player of the Year, Sam Bordage. Thank you, right? yeah. From Purdue Northwest University and our Community Service Award went to University of Arizona. Congratulations to those people. <laughs> our Overall Service Community Award this year goes to Boise State University. They did a fantastic job, raised a ton of money, uh, and they do it year in and year out. So congratulations to Boise State University. <laughs> Our Don Spencer Award went to Dr. Armand Rastami Gibbon, who's going to come up here and, and do the D2 Men's National Coach of the Year presentation right now. So you're on the clock. <laughs> you guys know what they say about karma. Um, when I was getting up to, to start yesterday, um, someone at our table had said, hey, if you want to get people's attention, just hold up a cell phone and say, hey, did anybody lose this? And everybody would be quiet. So we were taking the bus downtown, and um, Paul wanted me to announce that the bus was going to pick up in the same spot we were getting off. So he said, grab the bus microphone and tell people. I said, okay, I'm going to do the cell phone thing. So I held up my cell phone and said, hey, anybody lose a cell phone in the bus? <coughs> immediately quiet, okay? <coughs> I announced we were getting off. So we all got off the bus. And, you know, 
Paul and I played a lot of jokes on each other. So everyone that kept getting off the bus saying, hey, because I was sitting in the front row, Paul was sitting in the front row too, he's like, hey, someone left a cell phone on there. And I felt like I got myself a lot. So then five people get off, someone else say, hey, there's a cell phone there in the front seat. And I'm like, I don't know, I thought someone was screwing with me. So finally, I went over to Paul and I said, hey, do you need your cell phone? People keep saying there's a cell phone in the front seat. So you know what they say about karma, right? Karma is a terrible thing. Okay, <laughs> so Men's Division Two. Um, Men's Division Two, uh, I do want to point out, is a special entity because in the ACHA of the five divisions, it has the most teams. Um, and so I think the coach that's selected, please realize that it is an aggregation of, I think, 180, 186 teams. Um, for, for this selection. This team, this coach, um, under their leadership this year, had a record of 34, three and zero. They were the number one team in the West region, and for their program, that was the first time ever. They averaged over five goals a game, while goals against was held at 1.5 goals per game. Um, they were, with playing opponents that were um, rated in the top 20, they had a, a team record this year of 27 and 2. They went 2 and 1 at nationals, um, only loss to the eventual national runner up, Miami. Uh, this is back to back Coach of the Year honors um, for, for this gentleman um, from Montana State University. Please join me in congratulating Dave Weaver. Thanks guys, uh, to win this award once is uh, pretty awesome, to win it twice is uh, very humbling. I uh, like to kind of echo what Rick Tockett said when he got the uh, nomination for the Jack Adams Award, which is this is truly a team award. And I'd like to thank uh, the staff, the coaching staff at Montana State. When we started this program about eight years ago, we had a staff of two coaches and a manager, and now we're up to over uh, seven coaches, three managers, a nutritionist, uh, equipment manager, a physical therapist, the list goes on and on with who helps to make our program what it is today. A uh, huge thank you, obviously, to the, the players. Uh, we all know when we coach at this level what the dedication the players have to play and to give them everything they have every time they step on the ice is, uh, is truly incredible. Uh, and then a thank you to uh, Montana State University and the city of Bozeman for their support every year in the last three years and helping us get to the national tournament both financially as well as just the overall support. And finally, a uh, big thank you to the ACHA and, uh, and John Eccles for all of his help over the years to help our program get to where it is. Thanks guys. Thanks Dave. Next up, the uh, acceptance of the 2023 Minutes Dave Jurassic. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I don't know if everybody had a chance to just briefly take a look at the minutes, the third page in the packet that was out in front. Uh, it's titled, on the top right, American Collegiate Hockey Association, 2023 Annual Meeting Minutes. If you can take a brief second to go through them, see if you have any questions or concerns, and then I'll accept the motion to accept them if there are no questions. If there are no questions, may I have a motion to accept the minutes? Randy, thank you. Is there a second? Thank you. All in favor, just raise your hands. Any opposed? Thank you very much. Thanks, Dave. Jim Martin, report of the treasurer. Okay, thank you. Um, thanks everybody for coming. It's nice to see a, a good crowd here. I think this is, seems like it's more people than we used to get at Naples, but um, I think he said we're on two, I think he said. Oh, 
let's see. Maybe we went to sleep. Um, so today, now we've got the um, the financial update for the year, and again, uh, the financials are on a lag. So what the what you should have gotten or what might have gotten, depending on when you came in, uh, is the detailed financial statements for 22-23. This year, 23-24 is of course still underway. We're still closing out the national tournament stuff. So I'll go over some projections for that, and. Um, and um, and then we'll not go over the sheets that you were given in detail. We do that now on Friday. So yesterday we had an hour. We ground through every number on here as you know questions, discussion about what that is and what that looks like. It was absolutely riveting if you weren't there and you you missed out on a good one. And uh, it was surely the uh, most exciting thing in Nashville that's happening this week. So um, if you missed it, I'm sorry, but. If you have questions, though, you know, send me an email. I'll be around here. You can ask me or whatever. But we just don't, we just won't go over it today. So um, usually I get a round of a round of applause for that when I say that. But um, so um, just a just an overview of our systems that we have. So uh, still, and I say it every year, is the uh, financial system is basically a closed box that I don't handle any money. I don't handle any checks, no cash, nothing. It's uh, everything goes. Checks and payments from your universities will go to a lockbox. That's a, basically a PO box. The bank goes, cleans it out. They deposit everything into the account. All I get is a PDF of what's in the account. So same thing the store where you might order uh, score sheets or helmet stickers. Um, that's just a feed into the bank account, electronically feeds in there. Um, the Warrior Store, same thing. That's the, AC, the ACHA one. And then, um, and then we've got the uh, Square website is where the uh, the Warrior stuff is. So if you've ever looked at the Warrior store, that's through Square. But again, all that money just flows into the account. Um, we use a thing called Pinnacle, which is a PNC product that organizes all the accounts together. So I can see the balance, move stuff from account to account, um, You know, look at the historical detail and record what happened because I don't get the original documents in and that. There was a change in the accounts this year that because interest rates have gone high, as you notice, if you bought a car or a house or something, um, we were offered the bank now has a money market product that makes 4% a year. Um, and they're going to hold that rate for at least nine months. So we got one of those and we've made, I think, about $25,000 in interest yet this year just on being able to park that money in the, uh, in the money market account. So um, very handy to have that. And the lockbox is part of that pinnacle system where I can go into Pinnacle and look at the, um, the detailed transactions and what's happened with that. So if you look at the financial statements, they're organized now by, so I take the QuickBooks and reorganize them by program. And so you'll see that the national tournament income and expenses go together. Regional tournament income and expenses go together because QuickBooks, when they're, they're split out, it's kind of hard to see the flow of how that stuff all relates and goes through. So. This is organized so you can review it by program and see you know, how the programs each do individually in that. Um, the biggest one is obviously the national tournament, um, which every year is, uh, is held at a different place. Last year was in Marlboro. Um, that was a little disappointing. The, the costs were a little high there, and some of the overhead items were, um, were, were uh, large. And so we ended up, uh, that was a net loss of $16,000, which isn't bad because it's a big event and everybody got there. That's not typical of the other hosts that we deal with. It was just a, a things with that venue host and their internal system. So obviously we're not there anymore. So in, um, in St. Louis though, where it's a completely different model for how they do the hosting, um, we, should be a, we should be probably net revenue of over $100,000 on the tournament. So it's a huge swing just based on the partnership we can have with a host and how they view the event and how they do their stuff. So um, next year we're thinking, um, oh, and this was the um, total revenue for the financials that's way at the bottom there was um, 53, 552, 42. So that's over a whole year. We were uh, net positive of the $52,000. For 22, 23, again, as we talked about last year, um, the U.S. Hockey had a dues increase to us, to the ACHA, of $100. So each team in the ACHA owes U.S. Hockey uh, $800 now instead of seven. So of your dues you pay, whatever levy you're at, subtract now $800 from that, and that goes that goes right to U.S. Hockey, the $800. The rest stays with the ACHA to do our programs. And so last year, as we said, we did not pass that along to teams and. Um, 
even with that, and be, because of the way the way that uh, the national tournament went, and it was very very successful this year in St. Louis, it was a great event. Um, total revenue for ACHA should be over a hundred thousand dollars too. So um, we didn't pass that along, and that's including the extra hundred dollars that that goes to USA Hockey now. So um, overall, a very very good year, and it's all really fueled by the product of the national tournament and that. So we do have about. Um, 30 minutes or so I can answer any questions you have so um, nope that's it if you have any questions oh please uh, send me an email it's just treasurer at ACHAHockey.org um, give me a call or something I'm always keen to talk about financials and that so um, I'm just gonna put this back on you oh, I mean it's gonna unplug it's gonna go away the screen's gonna go away Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. It's like a puzzle. How did Jimmy meet this? You're on. Am I on? So up next is the uh, executive director of the board, Craig Barnett. <laughs> well, welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Craig Barnett, the executive director of the ACHA. Um, first of all, when we when we looked at making the move um, from Florida, in fact, uh, can the Florida Gulf Coast coaches stand up? Where are they? There we are. There. Thank you. Um, how was travel? Pretty good? <laughs> <laughs> good. I talked to them out in the lobby. They said best move ever. So, um, but welcome. Thank you guys. Um, and happy Mother's Day, you know, uh, for any mothers out here and, and for all the husbands out here, please wish your wife a happy Mother's Day for me because all as I thought about was the Kentucky Derby. We wanted to avoid the Kentucky Derby. It was just something that Naples always you know, we, we had to stay away from. So um, when, when we booked this, then we found out it was Mother's Day, and that's my bad. So, so please wish your, your, your wives a uh, happy Mother's Day. Um, so I'm not gonna, um, I am going to go through this real quick. National champions, because uh, not everybody wins a national championship. So once again, congratulations to, to uh, Adrian College on the, on the men's one side. On the men's two side, congratulations to Indiana University. Our men's three champions there, Lawrence Tech University. Our women's one champions, Adrian College. And our women's two champions, Sioux College. Just going through some numbers here, um, as we usually do, so you understand the makeup of the ACHA each year. Uh, we had 473 uh, teams this year declare uh, during that J uh, July period through September. Of the 473, we had 457, 56, one of those numbers, uh, actually competed this year, so they were active members this year. So our numbers are, are slowly growing up, going up again. Um, you know, um, I have some numbers here that we anticipate for next year, but on the membership side, um, we received our report from, from USA Hockey. We had a total of 12,735 members of, in the ACHA. So that, that consisted of 11,500 plus players, which is amazing, student athletes. So we're about 12,000 student athletes that uh, we're very fortunate to be part of, and uh, about 1,200 coaches. So that's, that's an impressive number, and uh, you know it, it's interesting. Um, the numbers last year were a little bit lower in terms of uh, teams that competed, but our, our overall player numbers, student athlete numbers, was, was a little little higher last year. Um, not by much, within within 100 overall, but. Uh, so we're, we're averaging around 12,000 student-athletes every year. 
In terms of the amount of games, that, that, that we played a lot more games this year than last year, so 5,371 total ACHA games this year, from men's one, two, three, women's one, two, includes men's two regionals, and includes the national championships. And you can see those numbers broken down there. It's a lot of game officials, right? Uncle Eddie, where's Uncle Eddie? Where's Eddie? Congratulations, that's a heck of a year. Looking toward next year, next year's numbers here. So we basically have 14 new programs coming in. That's the top part. Um, you can see at the men's two side, there's six new programs coming in the men's two, three on men's three, uh, one with uh, women's one, and four with women's two. The interesting part is the change of uh, divisions within our membership. So you can see on, on um, men's one, we have three new programs coming in. On men's two, we have two. And we have 12 new programs transitioning from men's two to men's three next year. So, you know, there's for, for different reasons and so forth uh, that went through the application process and it changes the landscape a little bit. National tournament this year in St. Louis. Um, for those of you that attended and were, were and qualified and participated, um, we we thought it was a, it was a great uh, a great success again this year from an administrative standpoint, uh, from a coaching standpoint. You know, in terms of you know how how well you did and the experience that's important for us, and obviously the the most important thing for all of us is the student and athlete experience, and that's what we focus on and try to provide. And it's, 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 it's really easy to do when you have a great host, you know, and we have the St. Louis Blues are very invested in the ACHA. They're, they're, they're top people, have uh, sons that have either played or do play in the ACHA. So there's, there's a vested interest uh, from the St. Louis Blues side of things. We have the St. Louis Sports Commission, which are very active and very supportive with their resources and their personnel to support our needs when we're in St. Louis. And then obviously we have our two hosts um, with, with uh, Maryville University and, and uh, the Centene Community Ice Center. So based on all that, we, we, um, I, I think we, we did very well there. Um, not only from, from a ticket sale standpoint, as you can see on here, uh, when you, when, with our ticket sales, as you may know, we have all tournament passes, we have day passes, we, we implemented student passes and military uh, pricing and so forth. Um, but we brought in over you know, $230,000 in ticket sales. Um, prices did not increase from two years ago. Um, so so it was, it's well supported by your, your fans, by your, your schools, and by your, your student athletes' families, as well as within that region, we, we experienced a lot of uh, um, local, regional attendance there as well. Um, the, on the women's side, we, we did another educational uh, uh, platform there, and, and that's what we're trying to build and build every year at our national tournament, is, is being able to tell the who, why, who we are, where to play, where our teams are located, just talk about the ACHA to local prospective student athletes at one time. And it's, uh, it's a great opportunity for us to, to do that. So um, we appreciate that. In terms of broadcasting, uh, and our, our partners from Flow, Flow Hockey are here uh, this weekend. Um, it was very successful, except for one, maybe one period, a very important period for men's too, but it was, it was very successful overall. Um, you can see the viewership numbers here. Um, we had, a, including, including the men's two regional tournament, we, we broadcasted the uh, 157 games, live stream with uh, what used to be called Hockey TV, which is now called uh, Flow, Flow Hockey. Um, you can see the, the average viewers per division went up compared to last year and certainly compared to 2022, last time we were in St. Louis. It, men's one was averaging 851 viewers a game. A viewer is defined as somebody that logs in, that has a subscription, that watches three and a half minutes of a game. Um, that's their definition of a viewer uh, in terms of flow, flow sports, flow hockey. But you can see the, uh, you know, going down that uh, all those averages for all five divisions is an increase. So, so it's, it's, uh, it's been a, a very good product for us. And, uh, 
we're, we're, we're proud to have Flow Hockey here supporting us and we, we have you know room for improvement just like we do in all areas. Um, they are our title sponsor. You know, we're, we're in uh, just completed year two of a five-year deal with them. So they, they, they provide us a $35,000 title sponsorship every year. And then the viewership money that we got uh, was just south of $30,000. So that, that revenue goes into the budget and helps obviously pay for a lot of different things to, to run that tournament. 2025 national tournament. Um, that, that will be held in, in uh, St. Louis again. As you know, we signed a, a contract with St. Louis uh, for 2024, 2025, 2027, and 2028. 2026 is an option year, and I'll talk a little bit about that in, in a few minutes. The dates for, this is the new format that we talked about last year. What we were trying to do is get all the games in one facility. Uh, for example, this year in 2024, men's one played four games at Maryville University. Women's two played two days worth of their pool play at Maryville University, which went outstanding. And they're a great host, and the facilities are great, and so forth. So the goal was to try have it all in one location like we did at the New England Sports Center in Boston. So what we did with the overall tournament dates, as you, if you were here last year and recall the conversation we had, is we extended the tournament dates by three days to provide more ice so we can have all 117 games at one location. Um, so that goes into effect this coming year. To be determined if this, was a, if this is a good move or not. So when you look at the dates here for the individual divisions, the way the schedule works out, as well as Three of our divisions use pool play, so that's very similar. We know that they play, you know, eight games a day through the pool play, then goes down to the semifinals and championship. We also have two divisions that do, you know, men's one's a little unique and, and women's one's a little unique. So when you, when you try to put that into a schedule, uh, sometimes you don't have as much flexibility to move dates around. So to be determined how 2025 goes, I, just being straight up, when you look at the divisional dates here, men's one's March 13th through 18th. March, uh, men's two is March 14th through the 18th. Men's three is March 18th through the 22nd. Women's one is March 17th through the 21st. And women's two is March 21st to the 25th. Okay, so that's in stone. Um, you know, I, I, I'm gonna be very interested to see how that plays out. I'm a little concerned once it's all put together, how we extend it to get more dates at Centene, but by extending it, we're, we're, we're losing some of the overlap. And what I mean by overlap is when M2 is playing at the same time as M3, you know, when, when women's one's playing at the same time as women's two. When we started doing some unique events there in addition to the national tournament such as the educational programs which i think is very important for for all of us helps with recruiting and helps tell our story about the acha i, I think we're losing a little bit of that to be honest with you um so listen we, we you know i just want to see how it plays out this year and, and maybe maybe the best format is what we did last year in st louis where we we condensed it you know and, and we had some overlap and maryville university hosted some of our games that may be the better format. We'll see to be determined after the 2025 national tournament. Any, any questions on that part? Okay. So I'm just trying to be proactive here and talk a little bit in advance and, and uh, let you know what we're in for. And hopefully it's a great event. And may, that might be the best, best format ever. Again, to be determined. Yep, we have a question. So, so if I got the question correctly with the new format, um, now we're using more ice at Centene. Um, we used to practice at the, the outdoor rink there. 
because um, we had games at Maryville as well. So the question is, will they be able to handle the practices? And, and, and with a host like Maryville University, they'll probably be able to do that because we'll use more practice sites at Maryville. John, I don't know if I talked to you about that yet, but thank you. <laughs> uh, um, we also have, you know, it's, a, it, it, it's an assess, reassess type of situation, right? Like we trying to think outside the box, like, hey, we're in Naples every year, let's go to Vegas, let's go to Nashville, you know, and here we are in Nashville. Um, you'll, you'll meet a gentleman here soon, which I know a lot of you coaches know, but we, we now own our own prospect showcase series, right? So it gives us an opportunity to not only support programs out there in the country that are running camps in the summer focused on ACHA and our coaches go and they support and, and we get a chance to show up and talk to all these young prospective student athletes, men, uh, boys and girls in certain areas of the country about who the ACHA is and the options they have. You know, not everyone's going to be able to play Division One at Harvard. So, you, so we've been very successful with that, being a support system for a lot of different entities out there, including the NHL. You know, the, the, the Chicago Blackhawks, uh, you know, do the jog showcase in, in, in Chicago. Uh, it, it ties us in with the Blackhawks. You know, we've had success in Washington with the Capitals and Steve Hijek's involvement there. And a lot of you coaches go to those types of events and you get the talk. We, you know, we get to talk about the ACHA and more specifically, you get the talk about your, your programs and you interface with these prospective student athletes. And, 90% of the time, parents and kids are blown away. They never knew about the ACHA. The Anaheim Ducks call. They, the NHL, and Kev, Kevin's very in, involved in this uh, with USA Hockey, but the NHL have, every team has like a youth director. Um, and they have their own meetings. And, and, and USA Hockey bring them to, to their annual meetings. And they, they, they talk about programming in their communities and so forth. So uh, one of those conversations years ago, the Anaheim Ducks heard about this and they called us and so we helped them kick off their, their uh, uh, prospect showcase type of event. It was during COVID or shortly after COVID, so the first one was virtual and so forth. You know, but, but since then we've been working with, you know, looking at trying to do stuff with the New Jersey Devils and other programs that reach out to us. So that ties us in with the NHL. So my point being here is with that outdoor rink at St. Louis, you know, there, I, I would like to try bring, bring one of our prospect showcases to St. Louis during the national tournament next year because it's it's boring for us to put on that event. We have tons of time to give, so but it, it will add a lot to it. But I think it, it allows a lot to to us to talk about the ACHA and talk about you know the teams participating, being able to to talk to their uh, local youth and so forth, but also other coaches that want to come and be part of the national tournament and, and be part of a prospect showcase. So that's, that's what we're planning. We're going to plan to try and do that if, if the ice time situation works out. But we have to take care of the games first, obviously, the practices first, we have our teams that pre are, are qualified, prepared for the national tournament. And then if we, could, we can do a prospect showcase at the same time, that would be fantastic. So um, we're always looking for those types of ideas. Um, Okay, where are we here? So I, I'm going to share my time with a few people here. Um, this is this is an exciting project for us, um, for me at least, because you know what we do is we we listen to membership. We want we want we want to hear your feedback, and we want to we want to at some point here see if some of the ideas that membership have um, are, make sense for us to look at. Right, so. A couple of years ago, you know, during your divisional breakout sessions, women's one and women's two are talking about, hey, what, what would it take to have like a women's three division? Um, when I first came aboard, now six years ago, wow. Um, you know, there was a lot of talk about, hey, maybe, maybe a non-tournament bound division on the men's side, like a men's four, name it what you want. You know, and, and we kind of looked at it a little bit and then, you know, business happens and you, you, you know, season starts and, and so forth. There's been some talk at, at other divisions about, you know, a league, like maybe a different type of league. So just like everything, assess and reassess. Things change, right? So I think this is a great time for us to look at the association as a whole and, and maybe look at some of these ideas that the membership has. 
And, and, and so what we want to do is we, I went to, to Paul and the board and, and we talked about a strategic plan. But let's, have a, let's have a neutral party come in and look at the ACHA, take some of these ideas, assess them, unbiased approach to it, and, and, and then report back and see if, how can we grow the game of hockey? How can we grow the ACHA? I want to get back over 500 teams. But I don't want to do it just by, you know, we, we have to have a support system in place and resources and so forth. There's parts of the country that we'd like to grow again. Um, so being in St. Louis two of the last three years, we've come to know a, a gentleman that has been very successful in, in, the, in the hockey market. He's a neutral set of eyes. Um, and and he, he's, he's actually an older guy from the early days in the ACHA that won a national tournament. So we, we've tasked Lloyd Ney, um, who is a, a partner, managing partner of the Sioux City Musketeers in the USHL, but he lives in St. Louis, and he's from Michigan, like a lot of people here, um, to, to chair this committee. And the goal of the committee is how can we, what opportunities do we have out there to grow our, our association and provide more opportunities for student athletes, prospective student athletes to play college hockey. Men's one at the NCAA level has not really grown a lot except for the last two years. Back when I coached that level 90 years ago, there's 58 teams. Back in the mid 90s, there was 58 teams. You know, we were still at NCAA Division I when, on the men's side was still at 60 as recently as four or five, six years ago. That's when they started adding new teams like Penn State and Arizona State and former ACHA programs. How do we continue to grow? So Lloyd has been tasked to figure that out. So at this time, I'd like Lloyd Ney to come and speak a little bit about the strategic plan, what his, his thoughts are on this and how he can receive uh, information and questions and so forth from our membership. We already have identified a few areas uh, that we should look at to see if it makes sense or not. So. At this time, I'd like you to welcome Lloyd Ney to the stand. All right. <clears throat> Sorry. You want me on this one? Yeah. Okay. First mistake. <laughs> I feel like with the uh, two stands up here, there should be a presidential debate going on or something. But um, uh, like I said, my name is Lloyd Ney. Um, we need to get a sheet up here because thank God it's Mother's Day weekend because that's a face only a mother can love. But uh, anyway, I, uh, I spoke to my wife before I took the stage here today and she said, just try and remember three things. Most importantly, try to be brilliant. Even more important than that, be brief and be gone. You know what I'm talking about, Rasty? No. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to start in the ACHA in 1993 at Ferris State University where I got to coach for a few years and it really uh, set the groundwork for what's ended up being a career in hockey, uh, something that I loved. So when Craig and I spoke in St. Louis and he floated the idea to me to get involved with this, it made a lot of sense because it's, it's where I come from and it's an organization that I care about. So. Um, when we talk about strategic planning, and again, like I said, I'm going to try and be brief here, um, for the ACHA, there's a few things that we'd like to do. First is we want to focus on initiatives that benefit the membership of the ACHA as a whole. You know, with 475 plus, hopefully growing to 500 teams, um, strategic planning needs to benefit everybody uh, in this room. And you can see that based on just the attendance here alone, there's a lot of people that care about the ACHA and where it's headed and where it's going. So when I think about strategic planning, uh, the goals are similar to when you look up something on GPS on your phone. The goal is, the, is where you ultimately want to end up and your strategic planning is the map and the directions that you get when you put it in a location. So we want to take that approach and we talk about why you want to engage in strategic planning specifically for the ACHA. Um, the first thing is because it promotes a long-term vision uh, where the ACHA hopes to end up over time 
and the evolution. When we talk about these projects that are about evolving the ACHA and assessing whether that evolution, it's time for it or not. Um, and so to, to simplify some of this, um, strategic planning is just what it says, it's strategic planning, it's not execution. Craig and his staff work all year long to uh, deliver great experiences to members of the ACHA, and that's more of the execution piece. So what Craig's asked me to do is be able to step back as a neutral party and give some thought to what's going on. You know, so again, why do we want to do this? We want to create relationships and alliance that strengthen the ACHA and align everybody around a shared purpose. Um, one thing that I use that Craig uses a lot is assess and reassess. And so hopefully um, I can do that. So uh, how do we do it? It's probably the most important piece here. The number one thing is that this is a member driven initiative. Um, the input from every member in this room is what drives what's important. So as we start the work, there's a few things that have been brought to our attention as far as divisions, uh, play, divisions of play, leagues, all those sorts of things. But there's also probably potential benefits in off-ice projects. Um, the point is, is that if there's something that's important to you that you're passionate about with the ACHA, bring it forward. Um, bring it forward as a project that we could work on to, uh, with our committee. Um, obviously, there's not enough time in the day to handle uh, maybe everything that every member wants to attack. Uh, so we'll have to prioritize some different projects and that'll be driven by, again, all of you, the commissioners uh, of the divisions, you know, Craig specifically. But once we get something that we prioritize as work that needs to be done, we'll create small groups that are made up of all of you. Um, very important that membership is, like I said, it's a membership driven initiative. Um, We'll create these representative work groups, look to seek input on whatever the issue, whatever the challenge opportunity is. And then um, at the end of the work, all we do is make recommendations. It's uh, up to all of you as members to uh, approve and execute anything. Um, <clears throat> so when we put these groups together, there's a, there's a few things that I use as guiding principles for this. The first is all work is important work if it can benefit the ACHA. So when you think about what's near and dear to you, what you're passionate about based on where your team is located, um, your conference, your division, um, bring it forward because all work is important work. Um, one of the things I know that's important to me is that we listen uh, to membership. You know, God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. So uh, when we take on a project, we want to engage people within the division, within the ACHA as a whole, to help us arrive at the best results. Um, we want to define what success looks like when we start something off. Uh, you know, it, it might not be the ultimate destination where we start, but we want to know what success looks like and how important this could be to the ACHA. Um, the last two things are we want to, <clears throat> we want to seek partnership. Um, you guys have done a great job growing relationship with USA Hockey. They're here. Um, some of the work that um, we've, we've talked about here initially is drawing attention of College Hockey Inc. to where they're um, engaged in a couple of the initiatives that we have going. And so we want to look at creating and leveraging strategic partners to be able to benefit the ACHA. The last thing is we want our recommendations to be sound and have a data-based approach to them. Um, so you know, as we as we work on these on these pro, uh, on these projects, you have to have data to be able to support your position and help make the best decision. So that's what I look forward to helping the shepherd with the ACHA is the talents, the collective talents of everybody in this room. Um, like Craig said, I started in the ACHA over 30 years ago. I live in St. Louis, and so one of the things that I'm most proud of is that I look across this room and there's a pretty large number of St. Louis guys that are here that uh, I've known since probably since they started skating. Uh, some of them have worked for me, some of them I've coached, but I, I get really proud about that thing. And what it says to me is that the ACHA is in really good hands. Um, if the group in this room is, is as talented as our St. Louis guys here, you guys are gonna be in great hands moving forward. Um, 
So we talk about some sample projects that are ahead, and I want to use this as a, uh, an opportunity for you guys to brainstorm and ultimately get uh, some projects on the docket that we can work on. Like Craig said, Women's 3 is a project that we'll work on. Taylor's done a great job of creating a starting document to be able to, to uh, look at that opportunity. Uh, men's 1, uh, standard review and opportunities within Men's 1. Uh, creation potentially of a Men's 4 division that helps programs that are just starting out. Um, one that's probably near and dear to my heart is the creation of a program within the ACHA that helps the members that are running these clubs. Students are running a lot of these uh, organizations and when, they're, when they graduate, they fell in love with hockey, they fell in love with the business. With this big group of people, there should be some opportunities maybe for some of those guys to continue in junior and in internships in hockey and be connected to the business some way. So that's that's a project that's near and dear to my heart to look at. And so um, creativity is important. There's nothing off limits. If you guys have ideas, I'm probably going to try and send out something to the membership as a whole on how we solicit feedback and ideas. But um, the last bullet point that I have here just simply says and with a question mark on it. So if there's any questions or any comments anybody has, let's fire away. If not, we'll get to work. Going once, going twice. Who are the members of the strategic planning committee? Uh, so it depends on the project. So if a project um, like the ones I spoke about, um, it gets brought up and Craig and the board and myself say, this is, this is something we have to prioritize, then we solicit the members based on you know, subject matter expertise. So it's not just one committee, it's based on the project. Perfect, thanks guys. <laughs> so what, what, what I love about it is, is you know, it's a neutral party that allows our staff, our staff to focus on the day-to-day -day for you, to support you in, in this, in, during the season and so forth. So the process would be is, you know, we, we really don't know much what's going to be going on with his committee and, and what Lloyd does, and he's going to then at the end of the day, if he has a project, make a recommendation to our board, and then our board will look at it and, and then put a subcommittee group together to really go into the details financially and logistically to, to see if it, it makes sense. So I appreciate uh, everything that Lloyd does there. What we have to remember, okay, it, it, and it, is, is things change, right? Like, like change happens. And there's some big changes going on right now in college sports, as we all know. Um, Hockey specifically, too. Um, so I, I, I went down to good old Naples last week and for a day or two, um, not just to go to the Tiki Hut, but I did, I did partake there a little bit. But went to the meetings of American Hockey Coaches Association and you know saw a lot of old buddies and so forth and, and had a chance to sit down with Lloyd and, and make sure we were prepared for today. But change is happening. So why, why have a straight strategic committee now? Because change is happening. Let's not get left behind. We want to be proactive, right? College hockey on the men's side. The Canadian Hockey League, Major Junior A, they are going to play in the NCAA. It's going to happen. Without a doubt, across the board, every NCAA Division I coach said that's happening. Maybe not in two years, but maybe three years. That's going to that's gonna be a game changer in college hockey. We are a big part of college hockey. Okay? You throw in that transfer portal that started two years ago, and then Deion Sanders took it over, the University of Colorado. Not only that, they put some parameters around that less than a year ago. And now, I don't know if you've heard this or not, but now, the transfer portal is, is basically just the, the, the checks and balance that the school that a student athlete wants to leave from understands that that student athlete has a desire to look elsewhere. That's really all it is. It's, it's also a recruiting platform for a lot of coaches, right? But now what they've done, 
and you may be aware of this, is now a student athlete can transfer after their freshman year and play right away at a new school their sophomore year. And that's what the rule has pretty much been. If they're in good academic standing, they make satisfactory progress and they do the proper uh, uh, compliance, right? Now, after that sophomore year, a student athlete can transfer to another school and be eligible to play right away. After their junior year, they can go again. This is, a, this is brand new in, college, in, in NCAA sports. They can transfer a fourth time and play right away. That's a game changer. All right? Now, throw in the NIL stuff, name, image, likeness. What I was not aware of until last week is I did not know how prevalent NIL is in, 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 in college hockey. So what I was told by, by three coaches that I know at the Division I level, and I bring this up because a prospective student athlete is eligible for an NIL. You know, I, 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 you know tier three junior hockey, if you're in a location that that team is God there, that a kid playing in the NA3HL could have an NIL from a local hardware store because he's a prominent figure in that town. So NILs are also for prospective student athletes. But you throw the NIL in now with this transfer that a student athlete can transfer four times in a college career, which I think will be terrible for retention and terrible for grade point averages and so forth, but they're allowed to do that now. So what I was told, what, what's gonna happen, I'm just gonna pick on some schools at the NCAA level to illustrate it for you, okay? And I'll use this, I use the same teams all the time because two of the three coaches that talk to me use those teams, specifically, just to make an example of. If you're a good prospect, okay, not a great one, if you're a great prospect, you're probably in the men's side, you're probably playing in USHL, you probably have your college commitment early and so forth. If you're a good prospect, you know, to very good, you're, you, let's just say he, go, he or she goes to Canisius College to play college hockey as a freshman. That student, a lot of freshmen now are, are getting offered like $10,000 NIL, okay? Sophomore year, that student goes and transfers and now goes to, they picked on, on Dave Jurassic there at Sacred Heart. Now that student athlete at Sacred Heart is getting a $25,000 NIL. Junior year, that student athlete can transfer and go to Providence College and that, that school's giving them 50,000. The schools aren't supposed to be part of it, but they are indirectly. That, that student athlete, he or she is getting $50,000 NIL in a junior year. And then that student athlete can go to University of Minnesota or Michigan State or senior year, play right away and can have a $75,000 NIL. That is in the works now. It's crazy. But it's a game changer. So when you throw in the Canadian Hockey League and, 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 and USA Hockey can maybe speak a little bit more to this because it's, it's, it's a huge topic. I'm sure, Bobby, you're dealing with a lot. Um, but it's, it, you know, the coaches are like, man, oh man, I can't believe this is going to happen. Um, you, throw in, you throw in the transfer portal. You throw in the ability to transfer four times in a college career, which I'm not a big fan of, but and then you throw in the NIL, it's a game changer. So I think it's a huge asset to the ACHA to have a strategic plan in place, but that be, to have somebody like Lloyd to chair this. So I'm, I'm uh, and I know I'm taking up a lot of time here, Paul, but um, I think it's important for you, uh, for those that don't understand what's going on uh, behind the scenes. Like I said, I never really knew that, about the, uh, the NIL money that is currently being used and we could have ACHA players making NIL money, and we probably do have some, especially those that are really good on the, on the TikTok and so forth, whatever that is. So, okay, I'm off my, off my horse there. At this point, I, I want to uh, thank uh, our, our, our new coach in chief, Larry Roca, for, for, for organizing our, our coaching clinics here this weekend and, and to have to have Bob Mancini, Kevin Erlenbach, Heather Mannix, and, and Scott Pollock here to, to do the level ones, level fours, and, and uh, the coaching education programs for us. 
uh, just adds more value and benefits to, to this event. So I really appreciate that. And at this time, I want to give the floor to, uh, to Kevin and, and Bobby. Thanks. Well, it's great to see everybody. Thank you for letting us uh, have a few moments to, of your time to, little, to share a little bit more about what the ACHA and USA Hockey uh, partnership really means. Um, my name is Kevin Erlenbaugh. Um, I apologize in advance if, I, if some of the stuff's repetitive from previous years I've spoken to you, but I think it's important that the group that understands and knows you know, the many components of the partnership and obviously the ways we can enhance it and grow it, and we're always looking for ideas. Uh, ACHA is very close to my heart. I say I was, um, I don't want to say an athlete cause about myself, but participant in the ACHA many, many decades ago. And uh, most of my staff actually are uh, alum of ACHA. So um, it's got a special place for me just in the hockey universe and, and the skill set and, the, and some of the best administration and hockey directors I know are, are alums. So a little bit about what USA Hockey and what we are overall, um, and Bob and myself, we always like to dispel the thought that we're just Olympic teams. Um, we are one of the few in, in the U.S. Olympic Paralympic space. Uh, it's called NGBs, or National Company Bodies, where we focus and worry about um, everything from kids putting on the skates for the first time to, to the Olympian um, and everything in between. So we, Bob and I, are on the grassroots side and, and put a lot of pride in that in, in the sport growing and perfect time for calling for my wife so hold on um, so just we want to make sure that we know you know what our guiding principles are and what we're about we're about servicing and growing the ecosystem that you're an important part of uh, just for scale and size of uh, take a little pride of where hockey's going hockey is one of uh, one of few actually youth sports and amateur sports is growing in, in the universe here um, we have close to, we're getting close to 1.2 million members that are part of what we do and help, help steer the bus, including 34 affiliates that are very important to our structure. Uh, some of the, the main components of, of the partnership between USA Hockey and the ACHA, obviously we help with safety. Um, a big piece is insurance and risk management, not just for your athletes, but for yourself as administrators and coaches and for the facilities. So for many of you that have had to get certificates of insurance uh, for your facilities and make sure they're named and everything like that. Um, I am the person you've had to trade emails with, so I appreciate everyone's work on that. Um, we do, do provide some financial support for the national championships and, and for some of the international events you do. Um, you do have a voting seat on our, we did do a restructuring a number of years ago, so it's now called the USA Hockey Congress. Um, so you do have a voting seat on that Congress and on the adult council, Craig sits on the adult council and provides a lot of input and intake to make sure that the needs of the ACHA student athletes being met along with the many other components that make up that group. Um, we do consider you our exclusive collegiate non-varsity partner and we wanna make sure and continue to tell that story of, of our preferred program pathway for those athletes. As I'm sure many of you know, once our kids get to that 16, 17 year old age and they start trying to figure out, okay, I love playing hockey, I want to continue and pursue it through junior and collegiate, but what does that mean? Um, there is a lot of confusion. Um, some of it's within USA Hockey space, some is not, and so we want to make sure that the groups within our space, and I'll talk a little bit more, know what that pathway is. Uh, 
when I take off my USA hockey hat, I'm also a coach and a parent and heavily involved in uh, girls hockey in the state of Colorado. And I was very, I don't think they know how much it meant and how of an impact it made, but Taylor and Molly did an hour long presentation on Zoom for all the girls in our Colorado Girls Hockey League. And I want to say, I, I knew it would be impactful, but then my phone blowing up the rest of the night. Um, it, it, it was interesting to know what people didn't know. Um, even the director of our program that's put a lot of girls through programs. So we'd love to get more opportunities like that to tell all of your stories. Uh, and then Bob will talk more about our coaching education. He is my counterpart for everything on the ice. I, I worry about getting everybody to the rink and having a ex good experience in that space. Um, we do provide a lot of digital and social content. I'll tell a little bit more about that too, what that means. And uh, just we collaborate to make sure that things like declaration, registration, you are the only group that doesn't do individual registration. You still are able to do um, by team, which saves a lot of administrative work for all of you. Um, just so you know, people always ask, what do you mean by some of the individual program benefits? Just as far as uh, peace of mind for all of you as administrators so that you can go coach and not worry about what happens if you kick an athlete off or do or as you coach or if there's an incident and the facility wants to know who is the general liability along with it. Um, just this is a very, I can't even say 10,000 foot view, it's like a 50,000 foot view. I don't want to bore you with the, the massive insurance guidebook that um, goes along with all of, all of your programs. Um, as I mentioned earlier, if your facility needs a lot of times because the facilities are city owned or even privately owned, but they want to make sure that they're named in the certificate of insurance, we can name, put them on and, and get you a custom COI. Um, we do have a form for that. Uh, and we do sanction play with NCAA programs. So I know, I don't, I don't know why it's still here. I signed off on a lot of his this year. So he had to deal with me over email a bunch, but um, anytime you're playing, whether it's with another USA Hockey program, I know some people did scrimmage some tier one programs, um, some USA Hockey junior programs and, and some NCAA teams. Um, we do sanction that so you are covered and protected within those matches. Something that we, we really wanted to increase um, previously in the old agreement, we provided one ACHA story in our magazine. Um, we really ramped it up. We did four stories this year. Uh, our editor is very aggressive. And then we did do a bunch of social media content, but they're very aggressive. And I think the biggest thing isn't not that if we would do any stories, is we don't know about the great stories going on with all your clubs and teams. Um, so whether you go through Craig or go right, go right to myself, if you have stories of players, programs, events you're doing, alumni, we want to tell that story so people understand the value of um, this program pathway of the ACHA and student athlete. Um, I can't emphasize that enough. I, just getting it to us and letting us know. Uh, and many times it comes together in fruition of, of video and content stories and our social media person is very talented so she wants to put more up there so it's beyond just the youth space. Um, something else that we did start doing this year is we work with a group called Legends. Um, if you don't know what Legends is, it's actually a fairly large sport uh, management company that does everything from facility management to uh, operation of events to a big thing they're into now is the space of um, digital advertising. And once you get into the digital advertising space, you realize how creepy it is that they, how much they can track your life. Um, but they did help us do a little piloting. We're going to go a little deeper of finding those athletes that, at least their parents, how they interact online, that connects with uh, our typical ACHA players, and it hits them with some advertisements on their websites and their social media feeds, and directs them back to the ACHA website where they can learn more about programs in the area. Um, we want to do more, not want to, we're going to do more where we start informing athletes once they start getting to 16, 17 years old and even the junior of the ACHA and the programs in the area so they know what's available to them because like I said, a lot of times that water gets a little murky. And then with that, I'm going to turn over to Bob to go over some of the changes and enhancements we've done for many of you as it relates to coaching and some things we want to do for opportunities for the athletes as well. So. Here you go, Bob. Thanks, Kevin and, and Craig. Thank you and the board. Thanks for having us. This is my first time here, and it's been wonderful uh, 
just how many people I didn't realize that uh, I've run into over the years and got to talk hockey with again. So this has been great. Um, a, a number of these slides, especially here, these first four or five slides, these are the same slides that uh, I, I gave in a presentation at the NHL Leadership Conference about a month ago, and the same slides that I gave just last week at the uh, American Hockey Coaches Association. And that's important to know because, you know, when Kevin mentioned, we're t we talk about the whole ecosystem of hockey, right? And that's what USA Hockey represents. So it's so important, not just that we have a relationship, but that we understand how we can help each other in continuing to grow the game. And this is really near and dear to us because this is what the American de Development Model is, which we launched in 2009. And this whole idea is getting uh, as many kids in the sport as possible and then keeping them in the sport as, uh, as long as possible and in the best environment is how not only we grow the game but we retain players and hopefully we're able to continue to put players into your programs and other programs. One of the biggest things that happens because of this is this and you know what's really interesting these stats come from the National Hockey League. Um, in 91-92 there were 18 states represented in the National Hockey League. Uh, a full year ago, now there are 35 states, right? And as we, you did the roll call, and I just listened, I had a big smile on my face as I listened to all the different areas and states and places in the United States that have programming for our athletes, that is really important. Because we know not everybody's gonna be an NHLer, and not everybody is going to want to even play Division I hockey in the NCAA. But we know that the largest majority of our participants want to continue on in hockey. And that's really exciting for us. So as these numbers grow at the top of where our NHL players are coming from, that means those numbers and those states and those players are coming to go to your programs as well. So that is really, really important for us. Um, I wanted to just put this up because it's interesting. This is our player development pathway for uh, the women's side. And, you know, I mentioned this is the same presentation, these slides I gave to the NHL. And this is important. Two things are really important here. One is our players are able to enter, exit, and re-enter our player development pathway at any point in their career that gets them to those highest levels of hockey you see. ACHA, the NCAA, and the Professional Women's Hockey League. And at young ages, when we see this start down here, we don't know where those players are going. And one of the coolest things that are happening right now is there's a bit of a movement in our tier one hockey programs to talk about their girls and their boys about options outside of the NCAA, right? Because there are limited options there. Limited options in the Women's Professional League, limited options in the NCAA, and then, all right, if you're not going to be there, what are your options? And the fact that our Tier 1 programs, both on the girls' side and the boys' side, are beginning to educate our players of how important your programs are, how good your programs are, that is a huge shift in our player development pathway. So that, just that alone, is exciting. I know at least three clubs in the Midwest because previous to getting this position, uh, I did player development in Missouri and Michigan and Illinois. I know at least three tier one clubs that have a night for parents and players to talk about programming in the ACHA. That's huge, right? That, that your programs are being recognized at a young age as a important opportunity for our youth players. Um, I want to talk a little bit about officiating. So my job at USA Hockey, and by the way, as what Kevin does is the most important thing, membership, talk about insurance, and, but I, you know, you always want to be the guy to follow the guy talking about insurance, right? That's a fantastic uh, opportunity. Um, but I, I oversee four parts of USA Hockey, player safety, so when we talked about neck guards for our players and things like that, that would fall under in my department. Um, player development, 
So the pathway we talk about where our players are coming from and how they go in and out of the system, and then coach education and officiating, both education and development. And this is a very new space for me, but it's an exciting space because you know, you're gonna hear the word again for the third time today, our ecosystem, right? None of these things uh, stand on their own, right? I heard a great thing and, and, and I had an official tell me, because you know, we talk about what keeps kids in the games and what chases kids out, right? Bad parenting can chase kids out of the game. Bad coaching for sure can chase kids out of the game at a young age. But you know what, bad officiating does too. Right? If a parent and player goes to hockey and they are put in a situation where they don't feel that that program or that game or that season is benefiting them in all of those areas, they tend to leave. So when we look at this, we have to look at everything we do, not just player development, coach education separately on separate islands, but we have to look at this all together. And this is a, 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 an exciting um, piece for us, is this whole idea of our advanced officiating development program. And what that does is it provides officials with opportunities, you can read that, um, but this is a high level program to get officials to the highest levels that they're, so they fulfill their potential. Like players, we don't know what that will be, right? Just like players officiating is determined, good officiating is determined by their ability to skate, awareness, decision making. You know, a lot like player development. So our advanced officiating uh, development program provides these opportunities for, for players or ex-players who are on that path. And that's what I want to talk to you about. This program identifies and trains officials and then puts them in situations where they either can succeed and they can decide, is this for me? So we have a great relationship with the USHL, uh, the North American League, where our officials are put into houses. They, bi they bill it in some areas. They uh, live together, travel together, work together, and are being evaluated so they can move through the system. But what has been a game changer and what I want to talk to you about is what the NHL has, is beginning to do. The NHL is beginning to identify ex-players. The IIHF on the women's side is there's a push to identify ex-players, right? And right now we all have players that don't ever want to leave the game, right? I want to play forever, right? But there are players there who want to stay in the game or want to continue their path in the game at even a higher level that they're in now. And they are talking, the NHL are talking to American Hockey League players, they're talking to NCAA Division I players, and they're talking to uh, um, those players who have moved in our programming, in our advanced development, uh, advanced officiating development program on a pathway to officiate at the highest level. And the thought is, hey, these are people who can skate, these are people who have awareness on the ice, and these are people who can make decisions. So maybe that is where we can get the next wave of officials. So we want to do the same thing at USA Hockey, right? We want to identify those players as well. <coughs> players who want to stay in the game and maybe have an interest in officiating. So um, what we're going to do, and we're going to be at the national championships next year, promoting this idea of, hey, when you're done, right, you might have an interest in doing this. And we want to find other ways. So I put up Scott Zelkin, uh, his email address. He is our uh, uh, Director of Advanced Officiating. And if you would like more information on this program, if you would like uh, a flyer to go in your locker room, your bulletin board, if you want to bring it up at your team meetings, if you want to have a meeting with seniors, all I ask you to do is send an email to Scott and he will make sure we start that relationship with your program, all right? And it won't be for everybody, but it certainly could be an opportunity for some of your players, both women and men, who want to find maybe a career when their playing days are done, right? And, and certainly if they're uh, 
too smart to be an official and a coach because they're going to make a lot more money while well, I'm good for them, as we all know, right? Yeah. Um, so please let uh, get a hold of Scott, and we're going to try to work through uh, uh, some different ways to see how we can make more of these spots available to ex-players. The last thing I want to talk about is our coaching education program, and um, I want to thank you for helping us get through this transition in our coach education. But there are a lot of exciting things for you as coaches coming out of USA Hockey. All right, we have had some problems with IT, but USA Hockey is spending over a half a million dollars to make sure we no longer have those problems in our coach education and our officiating education program going forward. I'm not gonna read this behind me, but I do wanna point out a couple of things. You as coaches, now have the same pathway as our NCAA Division I and three coaches, which is you take your level one and then you get moved as a level three and the next level you take is your level four. So you don't have to go to one, two, three, four before you go into continue education. You take your one, you get a three, and then your next level is four. Same thing we do with our NCAA coaches. That's really important. But the second thing that happened is really even more important. Oh, I, before I go there, uh, there is a youth hockey exception. All right? So how many uh, in this room are also coaching youth hockey at any level? All right. You don't get to go to level four. You have to follow one, two, three, four. And there's a good reason and I can stand up here and defend that all day long. There's nothing more important than our youth who play this game, and there's nothing more important than our coaches having the education to make sure our youth are coached. Because it's different when you coach youth players as you coach college kids, right? So if all you're doing is coaching in the ACHA, you go from one to four in continuing education. If you are coaching youth, you need to follow our programming at one, two, three, and four. The last thing I'll say is uh, what is exciting about the future of our relationship is we are building new curriculum that uh, will directly talk to the differences as we coach both youth and adults. And that's really new for us. And really you have a lot to do with us moving that way. Right? We recognize the need of how to change our programming and we want to provide that for you. So this is really exciting for us. And you saw a little bit of that this weekend. You'll see more of that in the future. Um, and then I'll just end. Uh, if you have anything really good to say or you have a question that's really good and positive, I'd be glad to take that now. If not, um, Kevin's email is, <laughs> yeah, sir. It wasn't my it wasn't my email, but okay. But Go ahead. It, it did have something to do with like uh, some dates of grandfathering you and after a certain date of level five. Can you go over that for uh, I can't, but Larry can. Okay, I'm oh, sorry. No, that's no that's really good. You give the experts, right? You gotta be smart enough to do so, that. So the way the system is set up is as Bob said, you do level one. If you're coaching just ACHA, you get waived through two and three, you go right to level four. Once you get to level four, uh, an agreement we made with uh, ACHA, you would have, after level four, you have three years to get five credit units, which is basically five hours. So we did three hours here this, uh, this weekend, this event. If you move on to level five, right, so it's a symposium, it's just like a three-day event. Uh, the reference, by the way, I've been to a ton of them. Uh, then you would have four years to do the, the, the five credit hours. So that's the difference. Any other questions on that? I will say the other thing that came up this weekend, uh, we had a couple of coaches say, well, why did we only offer three hours of continuing ed? You know, maybe you'd want to take all five in one weekend, and we can certainly look at providing that over two days. What we really want to get, get away from is sitting in a classroom for six, eight hours on one single day and, and move on from that. So. Thanks so much for everything, appreciate it.
Thank you, uh, thank you, everyone. Um, Paul, Paul, and I spent a uh, little time with Heather on 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 Friday, Friday or Thursday, and what Heather brings to this whole coaching education thing is, is is incredible. You know, the from from what what motivates players to stay in the game and out of the game and so forth. So for those of you that it, that attended the CEPs. You know, level one, level fours this weekend. Uh, you know, hopefully you saw that as well, and we're really excited about building this uh, education piece here for our coaches. So the next thing, real quick here, I'm going to bring. Um, sounds like a fan favorite amongst our ACHA coaches here, but uh, there's an old pitcher, Joe Caprio, in his University of Illinois jersey. But uh, as you know, we started our own programming, the ACHA Prospect Showcase Series. Um, you know, with the success and opportunities we get in these different locations to talk about the ACHA. So we, so we, we, we thought we, we should run our own. So this is the first uh, summer that we're doing these. And uh, we, we, we had our first one last week or two weeks ago now in New Jersey. And, and for those interested, we will be in Vegas in June. And then uh, we're going to Adrian College in the Michigan area. Uh, later on this summer, so we're 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 starting off with three of them, and uh, we we're very fortunate to partner with uh, Joe Caprio, who was uh, instrumental in starting the the one with the Blackhawks, uh, our the jog showcase there. Uh, I just want Joe to come up and talk a little bit about this because what makes it successful is our membership, it's our coaches being there, working, inter interacting with the prospective student athletes, and telling the story about the ACHA in your schools. So Joe. Uh, yeah, so as, as Craig said, my name's Joe Caprio. I know, I think I know most of you in here. I've seen most of you. Uh, but uh, just a little background on myself. Uh, I'm from Chicago. I, I grew up playing hockey, obviously. Um, I coach, I currently coach for the Chicago Mission. I coach uh, for Chicago Cougars in the USPHL. So a lot of, a lot of footprints in different areas uh, of the hockey world. Uh, after I graduated from Illinois, I started working with the Blackhawks at their practice facility and uh, kind of had some open ice and kind of was like everyone has these combines and showcases, so why not do something for the ACHA just because I had such a great time playing there um, and I don't think there was enough uh, opportunity or education on, on out there about the ACHA for some players, right, and families. So that's kind of where the Jog Showcase was, was formed um, in Chicago. And then fast forward now, I, I left my job over with the Blackhawks and I kind of you know, told Craig I'm ready to partner with you guys and, and do this full time. So we started these three. Uh, in April in New Jersey, we had, um, for those that were there, I think it was pretty good turnout. Um, Yarrow brought over a team from uh, Europe as well. But uh, we had about 120 players there. Uh, on the men's side, these, these do both have men's and women's components to it. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to get the women's going in, in New Jersey just because of uh, there was tryouts and a couple other things. But uh, we're hoping you know, in the future that, it, that all three or all, however many we do, will all have men's and women's uh, showcases. But as far as the showcase goes, it's, it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday event. Uh, Friday's just a practice because uh, obviously I know a lot of you work and have other jobs and other commitments. So you know, get, getting in and everything like that. Saturday on ice, there's two games, and then Sunday there's one game, uh, and then also on Saturday there's an educational proponent for the f players and family, and then there's a coaches meet and greet uh, for for you guys and for the players to meet you uh, and introduce themselves and, and kind of learn more about your programs and talk about your programs to them and, and you know kind of sell yourselves. Uh, as far as travel and everything, I I, I do take care of um, hotels. If you need hotels, I do take care of all the meals while you're there. Uh, Friday night, we do do a coach's uh, social. So uh, as I told someone yesterday, uh, they're like, are you coaching in the ACHA now? And I was like, no, I just provide beer and food for, for everyone. So, um, so yeah. <laughs> So uh, if you guys need anything, uh, I know Craig sent out a couple emails, but would love to have uh, you know as many of you supported at these showcases because without you guys there, um, the players aren't going to come and, and these aren't going to be successful. So I appreciate everyone's support and um, 
like I said, I think everyone has a good time at them. And if anything, it's a networking event. A lot of a lot of guys uh, and girls, you know, they they schedule games and talk to other players or, and other coaches about their programs and everything like that. So uh, if you guys need anything, it's just capperhockeyservices.com or uh, Craig can send out an email with my uh, email and my phone number. So appreciate it. So it, it, especially in the women's side, that's important for us is to grow that that piece. And we were close to, to getting some good numbers in Jersey. So we're going to continue to work with Taylor and Molly and Ken and Ashley and anybody else that uh, has connections uh, in those areas. And USA Hockey will be able to help us to promote that to the, the girls and, and so forth in different areas. So um, all right, I know probably I'm approaching maybe 30 minutes now. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to go through this. Some accomplishments and achievements, I think, or improvements that we've, we've made, um, obviously, with the USA Hockey being here, and, and it's just been great to, re, you know, get, get the partnership uh, in, in, in throwing some benefits and values to, to our event here. So we really appreciate uh, the time of the staff coming down from USA Hockey. And as you know, we signed a three-year uh, extension last year, so we have two years uh, to go, and we'll probably start working on a, you know, get this contract going again pretty soon, Kevin. So appreciate that. The Flow Hockey Broadcasting Agreement uh, was a five-year deal we signed. We, I kind of shared those numbers with you from the value that, uh, that we get from them and the revenue we get from them um, based on our, 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 our games and so forth. So uh, we have... Uh, that contract goes another three years. Um, we did have a new merchandise partner this year at Nationals for those of you that were there. And again, that was a, a big step up from our previous uh, merchandise partner. So again, not only more revenue coming in to help pay for the tournament and so forth, but uh, you know, a wide variety of quality, price points and so forth. I think that's important. Uh, a lot of times at events, you take that kind of for granted. So I think we're, we're with a really good group right now and excited about that contract we have with them. Um, we talked about the strategic planning committee. I, I hope you see see the potential and opportunities there that they're going to be looking at for us and grow grow the ACHA and continue to look for ways to to improve. Um, the St. Louis uh, Nationals was obviously a, a, a success this past year. Um, um, again, what really drives that is the student athlete experience, and, and uh, you know we're always open to feedback on that. And I'll certainly be open to feedback after next year with with a different model, the format that we're using. So I appreciate that. One of the biggest uh, growth opportunities we have from an administration standpoint is finally putting some emphasis, uh, um, you know, in social media. You know, we have been doing it with a, it's been a team effort doing it, and it's been people working a lot of hours to try to promote the ACHA. When you have five divisions under one umbrella, um, you know, we have some, some divisions that did very well with social media and, and, and reaching out to our fans and our, you know, everyone that follows us and, and we, in, in some divisions, is a little scarce. So what we're doing is we, we've, we've, we've brought aboard a coordinator of social media. And the, the key there, De where is Devin? Devin Johnson, where are you at? Right here. Stand up. <laughs> so, so, so Devin's a young whippersnapper here. Um, knows a lot of technology terms that I don't know. And, and uh, what his role is, is the uniform. You make, make our social media presence unified. So it all looks the same. ACHA branding ties in with the great job that Chris Perry does on, on, uh, as our communication manager, putting fresh news articles up. We talked about human, human um, success stories that, that USA Hockey will also share with us. Well, that's perfect. You know, what we're trying to do is let's get let you, your success stories with your programs, let's get them to one place, and then we will share that through the website through social media, and also we can share with USA Hockey. So we're just trying to tie all that together. As you know, we're recruiting, we're recruiting teenagers these days, right? And they're all tied into social media. We need to do a better job there. And, and, and Devin's been tasked to work with our commissioners and, and our divisions to, to do that. So welcome aboard. Go get them. Um, Social media, we just talked about the prospect series, so that, that's, that's, a, that's a, I feel, again, an opportunity for us to touch and, and, and to sit, not, not touch, sorry, safe sport, but um, be, 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 be in the presence of prospects. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and talk about your programs. Um, but that's, that's important for us. That's another vehicle for us to tell our stories, right? Um, In-season division showcases. Uh, Dave's been working on those and we're starting to roll those out. You know, uh, we want, we, you know, we started with a couple divisions. What's, why that's important, it gives us the opportunities in season during the regular season for us to kind of highlight a division, have some, some games against cross leagues, you know, to, to help that, that good old ranking system kick in and so forth. But it, it, it promotes us as well. I know uh, Men's 2 is looking at a, uh, or, or Big Ten's looking at uh, a, a, a tournament like that, a showcase like that, that would involve, you know, men's two, maybe men's three team with Northwestern being a Big Ten. And, and Dave's been working on that or working with our commissioners to, to again, uh, promote our product. And then the game official initiative that, that uh, Bob Mancini talked about is huge. It's huge. We need better officials. We have 12,000 student athletes that, that can skate, that can play the game and have awareness, all those parts that Bob talked about. And, you know, I talk about where I'm coming from. Where, where, Tommy, where are you? Tom McKinnon, I'm going to put you on the spot. So when I was at Mercyhurst as an athletic director, Tom, I think you had on your team a couple guys that played ACHA hockey that were officiating during the season and making <coughs> money to go to the milkshake stop, right? Like you had guys that played for you that were officiating, correct? We, so it's not just after their, their playing days, it's also during their college days. They are, they're st college students are looking, looking to make a little money, have a couple pops and so forth. And, you know, I thought that was great that, uh, you know, uh, ACHA players were, were game officiating at the same time. So, so, you know, those opportunities are there. And again, uh, Scott Zelkin's uh, email um, would be the key there if you want to share that with your, your players. Um, Concerns, I talked a little bit about, uh, I'm a little concerned about how this, this, this extended uh, uh, schedule is going to be for 2025, so we're going to monitor that, but the bottom line is we're going to be in a great location, great host, and hopefully have a great experience, and if we need to reformat that model to, to get the most out of it, we will. Um, the state of play at hotels, you know, it, it, yeah, I understand it. Um, I want... It costs a lot of money to, to run the national tournament. It's great that we're making some, some revenue now to help pay for it, right? The, the main goal for the state of play thing is we bring in a lot of staff to support the national tournament, five national tournaments at one location. And that hotel rebate money that we get goes directly to the cost to bring in 25, 30 staff people throughout a, a 13 day, you know, as, as you know, you're paying hotels, we're, we've got to pay our hotels too, we've got to pay meals, we've got to bring our staff in and so forth to support the success. Do I like state of play? No, I don't. Um, but it serves a purpose right now and if we continue to be at places that have a great, you know, we do well financially and so forth, that maybe that's something that, you know, we can consider. Right now, what we're using that for, I'm happy to say, you know, thanks to the board, the board and, 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 and Jim Martin with the budgets and so forth, because we had success in, in St. Louis, you know, the, the additional costs now that we have with our membership with USA Hockey, that extra $100 per team that was covered last year. I'm, I'm proud to say the board has, you know, agreed to, we're going to absorb that again this year. So your costs to us will be, you know, the same as it, it has been. So in today's day, um, you know, we're trying, we're trying to, to, to keep that cost down for you because we know a lot of it comes from the student athletes as well. So, so um, the $800 per team, you, you know, part of your dues will be 700 of that and the ACHA will cover that for, the, for, next, for this coming year, that $100 increase. So thank you to the board on that. Um, Hall of Fame, we had our awards banquet yesterday and I'm, you know, it, it, it was a little disappointing, but there's some factors to it. I just want to talk about the Hall of Fame thing uh, right now because we never inducted anybody in the Hall of Fame yesterday. And it's, it's a large task. It's a task that not a lot of people want to do. Do, do we have any committee members here? Do we have Dave? Any other committee members? Gordy? So, so we're, we're going to look at uh, kind of to engage our committee in a little <coughs> different way. Um, the goal is we, we have a lot of builders going to the Hall of Fame. We have 12,000 student athletes every year. We gotta start identifying players that deserve to be in that Hall of Fame. And, and if, if for those of you that have been to our, our awards banquet Hall of Fame last year and the previous year, when we induct those 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 
student athletes, it's, it's pretty special. It's really special, you know, and I just, it's a chat. So I have it listed as challenges here, that's on me. And we're, we're gonna look at re, redoing that a little bit and, and maybe engaging the Hall of Fame committee into identifying, going back to the beginning and identifying players and keeping a log book and so forth. So we know, you know, we don't have to every year go back and start from square one. So we're gonna look at doing that. I think it's important. I love the ACHA. I think it's important that we, uh, we identify and get some play, more. We need more players in our Hall of Fame. Uh, we certainly need the builders. We need the El Murdochs um, and everybody else. Um, you know, but our student athletes, we, we want to kind of reformat and get some more uh, nominations from the player side. And then the communication thing, like always, we want to communicate. I, I, know, I know there are some nervous people out there coming into here before this meeting today about what's this committee, what's going on with, with, with women's three and men's four and, you know, maybe men's one and this and that. You know, we, we wanted to communicate the strategic planning committee, make the announcement today, hopefully have a really good understanding of what Lloyd's doing. It's very important to us as an association to assess and reassess. So, so I wanted to make sure that you guys were, were up to speed and I thought Lloyd did a great job with, with what he's doing that task. Um, don't forget when you're talking on the website, this is just quick, quick things here. We do have that map, ACHA map on there. That's to help you recruit. When you click on it, um, you know, it's gonna, you can, on the left side there, you can look at it per division. You know, you're talking to a recruit, a family on the phone, you know. Um, you can drill down by division. It's gonna show, show the, the coach's name when you hover over the school. It's gonna show the coach's name and email. And then the same with the Almanac. The Almanac has about 32 different items per school, per 457 schools uh, to help you with recruiting and it's to help us uh, spread the gospel on the ACHA. Uh, we need to keep those contacts up to date and that's why it's important to communicate any coaching changes you have with your commissioners or with, with our hockey operations department there. Um, Vendor show, hope that brings a little, uh, a little uh, um, benefit and value to your trip to Nashville here. It's great that we have a lot of our vendors here. Uh, Howie's, Hockey Tech, Flow Hockey, USA Hockey, obviously a partner, Jog, uh, Blade Tech was unable to, to make it here. Uh, Sports Stays is out there as is Warrior. Um, they, 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 they love the ACHA, you know, um, after your divisional breakout meetings, we're going to have lunch served in there again, social hour, coaches social hour, please take some, some time to visit our partners. In addition, we've had some guest vendors here, as, as you may know, there's five guest vendors out there from, from RinkNet, which is a huge recruiting type of uh, platform for, for coaches, CCM, brings a, you know, a, different, a different type of uh, uh, equipment and stick piece option for you. So we appreciate them there. Sport Contract is, a, is an analytical uh, a platform for those of you that are, are, don't have those yet. It's, it's certainly worth talking to. Um, um, Guardian is a, a player safety type of uh, product that are out there to protect the head and so forth for practices. And, uh, um, and heck is out there, hockey equipment certification. And, and I, I, I beg Coach Murdoch, because he's working with Len Clement and with the heck, he should have had t-shirts that says, what the heck is heck? So he could have figured it out. But, uh, but it's important for player safety and so forth. So please spend some time um, today to, to, to uh, say hi to the vendors and thank them for being here and thank them for uh, them to support the ACHA. I want to thank you guys. I, this is my sixth year. I love this, and I just appreciate being part of this family. So thank you for all you do for our student athletes. Craig, uh, before we turn, do you want to just go over the schedule for the rest of the day? I do. Um, so what's going to happen after this? We're going to, I don't know what time it is. Right now, right? Perfect. We're on schedule. So what's going to happen is we're going to go right to our divisional breakout sessions, which should be easy breezy, right? Not, not a lot of big things going on. Um, the rooms, the rooms. Um, so men's, it's men's division one is going to be in part of this room, I believe. Uh, men's division two is going to be in Hermitage room E, which is that way. 
Men's Division Three is going to be in Hermitage Room F. Um, women's Division One is going to be in Kingsley, and Women's Division Two is going to be in Edgewood.